Okay, so we'll continue with the lesson and move on to the next important um, topic. In the previous topic, we uh, talked about how the narrator was thrown into the swimming pool by a big boy and he went down into the pool fr feeling frightened. And now let us move on to the next important topic that is a sheer stark terror. So uh, the experience was a terrifying experience for the narrator. Let's see. Okay, so then he came to the surface and started beating the surface of the water. So, so that is what we talked about in the previous topic, that he had formed a strategy, a plan to save himself. The plan was to, as soon as he reaches the bottom of the water, he will kick uh, the uh, bottom of the water and then try to come up and then lay down flat on the surface of the water and paddle away to the edge. So that is what he tried to do. But uh, it was difficult for him. He tried to breathe, but then he swallowed water and choked as he was in the middle of water. And when he tried to breathe, water came into his mouth and it choked him. So it was a very frightening experience for him. Okay, so Douglas tried to bring his legs up, but they hung like that weight. Okay, so he tried to kick as planned. He tried to kick with his legs, but he felt as if there were weights tied to his legs. His legs hung like that weights. He had lost all his breath. His lungs ached and his head throat. So now as he was young, he was small, he was losing all his energy in the struggle to come up. Uh, in the previous topic, we said the nine feet uh, depth of the swimming pool felt like 90 feet for him because he was small. Okay, so here he had lost all his breath, energy, and his lungs started aching. And his head also started aching due to the pressure of the water as he was in the middle of water. Okay, his, only his heart and the pounding in his head said that he was alive. So he almost felt like that he, that he was dead. But the only sign that he, uh, proved that sure that he was still alive was the uh, pounding in his head and the beating of his heart were the only signs that indicated that he was still alive and living. So that is the experience that he had, the feelings that he had when he was in the swimming pool or when he was thrown into the swimming pool by the big boy. Okay, but still he has maintained the presence of his mind. He still has kept his cool. So he could still remember that the only way to save himself is to execute the strategy that he had uh, formed. So what did he do? He opened his eyes and tried to remember his strategy. He tried to remember his strategy and opened his eyes to look around. But the only thing that he saw was water and nothing else. And the water appeared like a yellow glow, frightening yellow glow to him. As a result, uh, he was filled with terror. Sheer, stark terror seized him. And he explains terror in a very uh, beautiful way. Uh, from his own way, he describes terror uh, as a terror that knew no, no understanding, terror that knew no control, a terror that only the one who had experienced it could understand. So the terror that seized him is explained in that way from his own 
point of view or from his own experience. So he says it was a terror that nobody can understand unless and until the person has experienced it. He says the terror that he experienced at that time did not have any control. He could not control the terror. It uh, overwhelmed him. So uh, he says nobody can understand that kind of terror unless the person has actually experienced it. And he was at that time experiencing that terror. Okay, so this is important for you to keep in mind. Okay, how he describes the terror that he felt when he found that he could not execute the strategy that he had made. Okay, so Douglas told himself that he had to remember to jump up when he reached the bottom. Again, as I told you before, he still has, uh, uh, you can say, the control over his mind. He still has kept his cool. He has still not lost his senses. So he remembered that the only thing for him to save himself to execute his strategy. Okay? As soon as, as he reaches the bottom, he has to kick the bottom and jump up. Okay? So he could still remember his plan, which shows that his mind is still alert, even in that terrible situation. So what he did is he again jumped with all his might. But his jump went in vain. So vain means useless. Uh, again, for the second time, he tried to save himself by kicking the bottom of the swimming pool and trying to come over the water so that he could paddle away. But his effort went in vain. Means his effort was useless. It was not successful. It was unsuccessful. He was still underwater. Okay? He realized that he was still underwater and he could not come over the surface of the water. So because of that, the sheer terror took him more tightly in its clutches. So there is a, a use of a poetic device here, literary device here. The literary device used here is personification. So terror is personified. It is thought of as a human being. It is given the quality of a human being. And uh, he says the terror has clutched him, means held him tightly in its hands like a human being. So that is the use of personification. Terror has been personified. He felt as if he was tightly held by the terror. Okay, so that is the end of this important um, topic. And now again, for you to practice your writing assignment, uh, sorry, writing or speaking. For that, we have this assignment. You can use it, it either as for writing uh, skill or for speaking skill. Skill. You can discuss this with your parents or siblings if you have at home uh, to develop your speaking as well. And you can also practice writing skill by writing the answers to these questions. The first question is, what did Douglas experience when he went down to the bottom of the pool for the first time? You have to remember that it happened twice to him. He went down into the swimming pool twice. So the first question says, for the first time, what sort of terror seized Douglas as he went down in the water with yellow glow? How could he feel that he was still alive? So you can um, write the answers to these two questions to practice your writing, or you can just talk to your parents about these two questions to practice your speaking. So we'll talk about the next important topic, that is the fight for survival is lost. So he was fighting for his life by forming some strategy. Okay, now in this topic we say the fight for survival is lost. How did he lose his fight? 
for survival. Okay, so the terror was so strong, the fear was so strong that it paralyzed him. Okay? The narrator felt as if he was paralyzed. He could not move his limbs. He could not move his hands and the legs. So that is how he felt. So some of you might have observed that paralyzed is spelled with S here. And sometimes you even see it with uh, C instead of S. Both are correct. One is the American uh, spelling and uh, the one here with S is the British spelling. So both are correct. Don't worry about it. Okay. So his arms and legs stopped moving. So that is what I said. Maybe because of two reasons. First, the terror was so strong. The fear was so strong. We talked about that in the previous uh, topic that he felt as if he was held by the clutches of the uh, terror. Okay, um, the first reason is because of fear that he could not move his limbs. The second reason is maybe now because he has exhausted his energy. His energy is uh, used up. So be uh, because of that, he felt that he could not move his hands and the legs to battle or move. He trembled with fright and tried to call for his mother, but nothing happened. So he's a poor, uh, small boy. So what he did is he trembled with fright. So whenever we are frightened, our body signals and we start shaking. So tremble means shake with fright, fear. And in that moment of fright, the only person that he remembered was his mother. So whenever we are in trouble, we usually remember the people in whom we have deep trust and faith. Okay, so he remembered his mother and called for his mother. But nothing happened. Okay, so as he was underwater, his voice did not come out. Okay, it remained with him. Suddenly, Douglas found himself coming out of the water, okay? So now again, this is the third experience that he had come to the surface of the water. Suddenly, he found himself coming out of the water. And as he thought that he had come out of the surface, come out of the water, over the surface of the water, he sucked for air. He tried to inhale because he was losing oxygen so he sucked in air okay but sadly he was not able to breathe in oxygen air instead of air water went into his mouth okay and maybe again it choked him then he started going down for the third time so in the previous um, topic we have talked about two times when he went down into the water so this is the third time that he's going down into the water okay started going down for the third time but this time all his efforts ceased and his body went limp okay so now he has used up all his energy and so because of that his body went limp motionless completely motionless and he started drowning going down into the water so he says a blackness took over his brain which wiped out fear and terror so he felt as if all of his surroundings were covered in total blackness and uh, he felt that even the fear that he's experiencing he was experiencing was wiped out of his brain so what does this indicate this indicates that he was losing his consciousness till here his mind was alert he was conscious he was constantly thinking about the strategy and trying to execute it but now at this point of time he was uh, losing his 
consciousness. He was becoming unconscious. Douglas felt as if he was wrapped in his mother's arm. So when we lose our senses, we start hallucinating. Okay? So he also hallucinated, imagined, fantasizing that he was wrapped up in his mother's arms. Okay? Then he became unconscious. Then he lost his consciousness. Okay? So uh, mother is important in everyone's life. So even at the last moment, before he lost his consciousness, he imagined the safe arms of his mother wrapping around him. He says, I crossed to oblivion and the curtain in life, curtain, curtain of life fell. Okay? So this is again important here. He says, I crossed to oblivion and the curtain of life fell. This is important. Why does he say this? I here refers to the narrator himself, cross to oblivion. So again, the writer has used a literary device here. What is the literary device? It is a metaphor. So we see metaphor in these two words, oblivion and oblivion here and curtain. Okay? So oblivion refers to the state of non-existence, okay? which is marked by death. So oblivion means the state of non-existence which is marked by death. So you can say oblivion is uh, metaphorically referring to the end of our life, that is death. And the garden uh, here refers to Again, the curtain on the stage. Again, this is important because uh, in class nine we have read Shakespeare's poem, not yeah, yeah, Shakespeare's poem Seven Ages, in which he compares our life to a stage. So again, Douglas is doing the same here. Curtain, okay, refers to that. Mm, so our life is like a stage where people come and play different roles, okay, uh, and as the drama ends, the curtain falls to indicate that it is the end of the uh, play. So in the same way he is saying, when the curtain falls, the drama ends. In the same way he felt that, that the curtain of his life also fell down, indicating that he was nearing his death. So this is a very beautiful, you can say, uh, literature, use of metaphor where he compares his life to that of a stage, like Shakespeare did in Seven Ages. And as his life came to end, the garden fail, uh, fell down, like the garden falls down when the drama ends in life. Okay, so we said, there is a use of a metaphor, and I've explained the metaphor to you. Okay, so pay attention to this. Okay, oblivion, as I said, means or refers to the state of non-existence marked by marked by death. And Carton here refers uh, to uh, when he compares our life to that of a stage. When the drama ends, the garden falls, indicating that it is end of everything. Okay? So the next thing he remembers was lying on his stomach beside the pool, vomiting. Okay? So after becoming unconscious, when he gained consciousness, he realized that he was out of the swimming pool and lying on his stomach. And he started vomiting or he was vomiting out the water that he had mm, swallowed in. So that is what he remembered after losing his consciousness. How do you think he came out of the swimming pool? Okay, And the chap that threw him in was saying, but I was only fooling. Okay, And the big boy who threw him into the pool was also uh, beside him and he was saying that he only was just playing with the uh, narrator. So maybe the boy, the big boy did not intend to 
uh, hurt him. Okay, maybe he thought the narrator knew swimming and threw him into the uh, swimming pool in a playful way. We cannot say that he was a big bully or a wicked person. Okay, as he was, uh, as the narrator was sitting um, beside the swimming pool, he thought that the narrator knew swimming. He did not realize that the um, narrator did not know swimming. Okay. Okay. Again, we come to the end of this second topic, and again for writing assignment, uh, write answers to these two questions. How do you think Douglas got rescued from the swimming pool? Okay, it's not given in the text. Uh, so this is reading beyond the text. Uh, you have to give it from your inferential understanding. Okay, uh, and we also have to think about what we talked about a little while ago. The chap was sitting beside him saying that I was just fooling around. Okay, and explain I crossed to oblivion and the curtain of life fell. This is an important question for you. Okay, so practice these two questions. And then we will move on to the next um, important topic. Thank you.